time for another DP Review road trip. This time, we're hitting the back roads of Idaho with photographer Michael Bonacore and Canon's new 6D Mark II. Our destination? Well, we're not sure yet. But along the way, we'll be visiting remote locations to meet up with interesting folks and capture some beautiful fall colors. From the open road to the end of the road, buckle up and join us for Michael Bonacore's Idaho. Congratulations on your new Hero Plus camera. This series of videos will show you the basics of capturing life's most incredible moments with your GoPro. In this video, we'll give you an overview of the Hero Plus camera. To get more details about any of the topics we're about to cover, download the user manual at gopro.com slash get started. Here's what's in the box. Hero Plus camera with integrated housing and battery a micro USB charging cable, a standard back door, a skeleton back door, curved and flat adhesive mounts, a mounting buckle, a locking plug. Let's take a look at the basics of the Hero Plus. The camera has three buttons, a shutter button on the top, a power button on the front, and a settings tag button on the side. When you're recording video, use the Settings Tag button to add highlight tags to your video. When you're not recording, this button is a quick way to get in and out of the settings menu for the mode you're in. Camera status lights blink when you're recording. There's one on the front and one on the back. The blue wireless status light on the front blinks when wireless is on. On the back of the camera, you'll find a micro USB port and a micro SD card slot. Now, let's insert the micro SD card and charge the battery. Open the camera housing by squeezing the door closed, then lifting the latch. Pivot the latch back and up to release the back door. Insert the card with the label facing the back of the camera. Your Hero Plus comes with a partially charged built-in battery but it's a good idea to fully charge it to get the most out of your first use. Connect your camera to a computer or other charging device with the included USB cable. For best results, be sure the camera is off while it's charging. When the camera is off, the camera status light turns on during charging and turns off when charging is complete. To get the most out of your Hero Plus, update your camera software using the GoPro app or GoPro Studio to ensure that you always have the latest features at your fingertips. Visit gopro.com slash get started for details. To capture video, power the camera on and press the shutter button. Whenever a great moment happens, press the settings tag button to add a highlight tag to your footage. Highlight tags make it easy to find the best moments for easy playback, editing, and sharing. To stop recording, press the shutter button again. To capture a photo or a series of photos, press the Power Mode button repeatedly to cycle to the mode you want, photo, burst, or time lapse. Press the shutter button. To stop time lapse photos, press the shutter button again. Want to change your video resolution from 1080p to 720p? Or maybe change the time lapse interval? Hero Plus has lots of great settings to choose from. Each mode has its own settings menu. Press the Settings Tag button to open the settings menu for that mode. Then press the Power Mode button to move through the settings lists. To change a setting, press the Shutter Select button. To exit the settings menu at any point, just press the Settings Tag button. The Hero Plus comes with two back doors. Use the standard back door in wet, dirty, or sandy environments. Use the skeleton back door to get better sound quality and only when water, dirt, and sand are not a risk. To change the back door on the housing, lift the latch, then pivot it back and up to release the back door. Open the back door, 
then firmly pull it off the hinge. Push the new back door into the hinge until it snaps into place. Be sure the seal is clean, then close the back door. To keep the seal in good condition, especially when using the housing in dirty or sandy environments, remove the seal and rinse it with fresh water. The Hero Plus can be used with all GoPro mounts. Two adhesive mounts are included in the box, along with a mounting buckle, so you can easily adapt your GoPro to your activities. Adhesive mounts make it easy to secure the camera to curved or flat surfaces, such as helmets, vehicles, and other gear. Always attach adhesive mounts to a clean, smooth surface at least 24 hours before use. A locking plug comes with your camera and can be used to secure the mounting buckle and help reduce vibration. For more information about anything in this video, see the Hero Plus user manual at gopro.com slash get started. Hi, I'm Barney, editor at DeepReview.com. The Sony Cybershot RX100 Mark III is an enthusiast-level pocket camera with a 1-inch, 20-megapixel Exmor R BSI CMOS sensor. It's the only large sensor compact on the market to contain a pop-up OLED viewfinder that completely retracts into the camera's body. The RX100 Mark III is the third iteration of Sony's premium pocket camera line and the only one to contain any sort of viewfinder. It offers a 24 to 70 millimeters equivalent zoom range with a sliding maximum aperture of f1.8 to 2.8. The previous two RX100 series cameras offered zoom ranges of 28 to 100 millimeters with a maximum aperture of 1.8 to 4.9. So as you can tell, the Mark III sacrifices zoom reach for a wider starting point and overall a faster, brighter lens. That's a solid trade-off in our opinion. The high-resolution viewfinder offers 1.4 million dots, while the 3-inch rear LCD offers 1.2 million dots. ISO sensitivity ranges from 80 to 12,800. The camera is also capable of an impressive maximum burst rate of up to 10 frames per second. On the video side, the RX100 Mark III can capture 1080p HD video at 60, 30, and 24 FPS. It also offers a built-in stereo mic. From an ergonomic standpoint, the small, compact RX100 Mark III features a click wheel around the lens whose function can be customized. The top of the camera offers an exposure mode dial, shutter button, on-off switch and pop-up flash toggle. On the back, you'll find a dedicated movie record button and click wheel. And it's in addition to a variety of other buttons, many of which can be customized. Other notable features include built-in Wi-Fi and NFC, and the ability to flip the LCD 180 degrees above the camera for the perfect selfie, if that's your thing. It also features a built-in ND filter, which will let you use those wide lens apertures even in bright light. The RX100 Mark III is perfect for anyone looking for a pocketable camera with strong image quality, a solid set of features, and a fast, versatile zoom lens. The built-in viewfinder is a bonus. Thanks for watching. For more information about the Sony Cybershot RX100 Mark III and many more cameras besides, visit deepreview.com.
Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II offers improvements over its predecessor, making it more comfortable for shooting while maintaining its compact size and capable performance. The G7X II is built around a 1-inch type CMOS sensor, giving it better image quality than a small sensor compact camera or a smartphone. The built-in lens is a fast f1.8 to 2.8, 24-100mm to zoom, providing a lot of reach and decent low-light capabilities in a small package. The tilting touchscreen LCD makes it easy to set up and take your shots from any angle, making it ideal for selfies or street photography. The image quality, especially color rendition, is excellent on the G7X II. Its fast burst shooting enables you to capture the action. The grip is comfortable in the hand, and the control ring around the lens can be set to smooth or clicky, making it useful for both photo and video shooting. Our criticisms of the G7X2 are a relatively disappointing battery life and slightly mushy fine details in JPEGs. Overall, the Canon G7X2 is a well-designed enthusiast compact camera that can capture good quality photos and videos. This pocketable camera is a significant improvement over its predecessor and sits near the top of its class. For more information about the Canon G7X2 and all things photographic, head to dpreview.com. The new Lumix G7. The one introducing 4K to everyone. Latest 4K processing and mirrorless technology in a compact and intuitive design. Providing touch-focused technology with the latest high-speed autofocusing. Recording video in stunning 4K resolution. And now with the new 4K photo, you can extract, show and save the perfect frame out of a 4K video sequence easily on the camera. Never miss a perfect moment. The new Lumix G7, the one introducing 4K to everyone. Panasonic. Hello, I'm Dan Bracaglia for DP Review, and this is the Sony A6000 mirrorless camera. The Sony A6000 is the successor to the very popular Sony Alpha NEX6. It sits just above the Sony A5100 in the company's mirrorless lineup. In fact, the A6000 and the A5100 are extremely similar, the biggest difference being the A6000's electric viewfinder and more extensive external controls missing from the cheaper A5100. The A6000 offers a 24.3 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and Sony's Bions X image processor. The biggest advancement over its predecessor is the vastly improved hybrid autofocus system featuring 25 contrast detect and 179 phase detect points that cover almost the entire frame. In fact, we found the A6000 to be class leading when it comes to autofocus speed and accuracy in a large sensor mirrorless camera. The camera itself handles well with ample customizable buttons and click wheels for solid control plus a quick menu. It offers a burst rate of 11 frames per second with subject tracking, full HD video capture at 1080 60p and 24p with clean HDMI output and Wi-Fi connectivity as well as NFC. Overall, this is an extremely well-rounded camera that offers class-leading features for a very reasonable price point. For more information on the Sony A6000 and all things digital photography, head to dpreview.com. Time for another DP Review road trip. This time, we're hitting the back roads of Idaho with photographer Michael Bonacore and Canon's new 6D Mark II. Our destination? Well, we're not sure yet. But along the way, we'll be visiting remote locations to meet up with interesting folks and capture some beautiful fall colors. From the open road to the end of the road, buckle up and join us for Michael Bonacore's Idaho. My name is Michael Bonacore. I am a travel photographer. 
I also run Resource Travel, which is a website where we aim to tell inspiring travel stories. I'm usually traveling about 200 days a year, but I've chosen to make my home here in Boise, Idaho. It's got incredible access to some of the most beautiful and breathtaking landscapes and outdoors that I've ever seen. The first stop on our trip was just shy of the Heaven's Gate Overlook above the Seven Devils Wilderness area for a few sunset shots. All right, Michael, so the light's closing out behind us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, where we are right now? So right now we're at Hell's Canyon Recreation Area. We are overlooking the Seven Devils Mountain Range. In this case, we have a cool road here, so I really want to get the road incorporated with the shots. I also like to get people in the photograph. So if you were wearing a red jacket, <laughs> I would say to you, Carrie, go stand out there while I get you with this stunning mountain backdrop in the background. As luck would have it, our director happens to be wearing a very red jacket. No way. Yeah. All right, let's try it. All right. Right there is perfect. I mean, this is such a beautiful location. This is really what Idaho is all about. So I like to underexpose a lot of times just because I find that it's easier to pull the shadows out. With some great photos in the bag, we headed down the mountain to set up camp and get some rest. When we got to Riggins, we stayed in a repurposed church camp, which was really cool. It was in the middle of nowhere, right along a creek, beautiful, quiet. You could see a million stars, absolutely incredible. Percolator cop. I could deliver you coffee if you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just coffee delivery. It's, it's amazing. The 6D Mark II is Canon's 26 megapixel entry level full frame DSLR. It utilizes Canon's excellent dual pixel AF in live view. It also features an articulating screen and can shoot up to 6 FPS in burst mode. All right, now we want them to come over here. Okay. Yeah, good boys. Guess we overstayed our welcome. Once we left Riggins, we continued north where we hit the Whitebird Overlook. One of my favorite locations in all of Idaho to photograph, especially in the winter. It overlooks this entire valley and it seems to go on for miles. So we got Zach up there, our buddy Zach. I really want to get this uh, compressed shot with the 85, you know, make it a little scary. He looks more comfortable standing on that rock than, uh, than I did, I will say. Yeah. Kind of got a little bit of vertigo in us. He's younger, I think. I didn't know what I was missing in life without a touchscreen. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. you just did not look, you didn't look right up there. No. After we left Wiper, we drove along Highway 12, which is some of the most remote section of Idaho I've ever seen. It's like uh, green waders and some really good suspenders. Working our way along the Selway River, we stopped at the Fen Ranger Station in the Nez Perce National Forest, hoping to get some advice on great photo ops nearby. Right here is the edge of the wilderness. I also got some sweet swag. Only you! The rangers pointed us to the Split Creek Trailhead, which featured a footbridge before a hike to a viewpoint. For me, the most fun I have on these road trips is campfires. Drinking a couple good beers, eating some great food, listening to great music, soaking in the stars. That's what road trips are all about. Next morning, we woke up before a sunrise, and we were lucky that we did because there was some beautiful fog hanging around the trees up at the top of the hill. Early morning, I love using a tripod. At F4, I'm getting a 1 25th of a second shutter speed. Yes, yeah, so we're going to set up an interval timer here. We are going to try to do our best to have a slow enough shutter speed to kind of blur that motion of the fog, blur the water in the foreground just a little bit, and uh, as the light's coming up, it should be a really nice scene. With the sun cresting the horizon and the fog dissipating, we turned our cameras around and shot into the sun for a different look. When you shoot at an aperture like f18, f22, when you're shooting into a light like a sun or a street light, it's gonna create that starburst effect. The rangers had told us about a location called Selway Falls. We thought we knew how to get there and we wound up getting lost. I don't know what this symbol means. I think that's Ranger Station. 
that's Ranger Station. What's this oh, yeah, yeah. square with a circle in it symbol? Uh, I think that's a uh, center point metering book. When we finally found it, we actually wound up taking some really cool shots. It's a beautiful location. No one else for miles. My preferred shutter speed for when I'm shooting moving water is around eight tenths of a second, maybe a second. It gives me the slow motion effect, but not too slow. After leaving the Nez Perce Forest, we drove north to the town of Fernwood to meet up with Christy Wolf to check out a fire tower she's rehabbing to put on Airbnb. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. It was really cool. Bright red, in the middle of nowhere, among all these giant trees. All the properties are off-grid that I do, and partly that's because it's cheap land, but also because they're remote, and I really like that. And I like trying to provide an experience that people are gonna love and kind of not even realize that they're off-grid. I think people don't even realize how tired they are until they have a couple days out in nature, and then they're like, oh yeah, that's what it's like, you know? I mean, I go to sleep when it gets dark and I wake up when it's light. People don't do that. Christy had a book of all these old radio communications, which outlined all the emergency calls they would get. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's pretty cool. Passenger having labor pains, and it gets better. Tell the lady that she must calm down and stop if she wants assistance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just wanna keep making really interesting places, and I'm gonna keep doing that as long as people enjoy it and as long as I'm physically able to. It was finally time to say goodbye to Christy and start making our way back south. Outside the town of McCall, we stumbled upon some of the best fall color we'd seen yet. Rich, pleasing colors have long been a strong point on Canon cameras, and the 6D2 is no different. Churning out warm, saturated yellows and reds, it really helped the leaves to pop against the conifers and the sky. So we stayed in McCall, and the next morning we woke up to a lot of fresh snow on the ground. Not that unusual for an autumn in Idaho. So I called my buddy Cody Monroe, who runs CM Backcountry Rentals, and he had some really cool razors that we took out all the way up into the mountains. After four days of shooting primarily static landscapes, I really wanted to have some kind of movement in my photos, some kind of action. Cody was driving fast and crazy. It was a lot of fun and definitely put the camera to good use in those conditions. So Michael, I can see you've got your 6D2 on the hood over there. What are you, uh, what are you doing? So I'm utilizing the touch screen flipped out and I've got the camera right here on the hood, which when I use the tap to focus and exposure, it's giving me a really cool inside view of Cody. Automatically focuses on his helmet and takes the shot for me. With the snow coming down, we had a chance to put the 6D2's weather sealing to the test. Michael Bonacore doesn't need gloves to shoot in the snow in the uh, mountains of Idaho. I do. I always switch into full manual because the brightness of the snow will fool the camera's meter and it'll often start to turn it all gray and it looks kind of mucky and you have to push the files in post. So I basically get an exposure that I'm happy with and switch into manual. That's how you have fun in Idaho, right? That's right. What I love most about travel and adventure is sharing the experiences with good friends, enjoying life, enjoying each other's company. And this trip had all of that in a state that I'm proud to call home. Road tripping through Idaho with Michael was an unforgettable experience. From small towns to towering peaks and everything in between, the natural beauty of Idaho shined through in each and every image we captured. Until next time, I'm Carrie with DP Review.